This is Aquila's brand new 42. It's slipping into the range below the 44. It's quite a different layout inside. And this is typical of the catamaran configuration. It's all about space. It's all about room on board. It's all about comfortable cruising. And it's an interesting boat with some nice options. For example, there are three different cabin configurations. So you can have a two cabin plus a smaller utility area. You can have a three cabin, you can have a four cabin. And I'll explain that in a bit more detail as we go on board. But we're going to step on here. There's a couple of things to show you. There is a boarding ladder underneath here, but the other thing that we've got here is this beam is actually a crane for a tender. It's uh, mechanically winched. And what it does is it slides out, that then extends down. You hook your tender on, lift it up, retract the beam, lower it, and then your tender will sit on chocks that go into these little slots here. So that's how you deal with tender storage. We'll step on board. You can see immediately the beam on here, the wide side decks, the huge amount of space you've got across here. It's very typical of this kind of boat, and it's great for spending extended time on board. We've got the seating area at the back here, the lift window to really open this area up. The door opens, as you can see, as a bifold. So you can see how that hinges across. And then this is the interior. Now, this is, uh, I think I'm right in saying boat number one. There's going to be a few small changes for people who want it. In fact, most of them will get it. And that is that this galley area on this one is just a straight, well, as you can see, a straight section. And you can still have that. But what they're going to do is they're going to be introducing this, which is more of a U-shape. And that, I think, will be a more popular configuration. But if people want this, they can still have it. And what this does give you is a load of worktop, actually. That's really good. We've got um, storage, as you'd expect, all along in places like this. We've got the cooking facilities, of course, microwave. More storage just there. And then behind me, we have the fridge and the freezer. So that's all of your catering. And the other thing you have here, of course, is this lovely, comfortable saloon area. In fact, there's a TV that can drop down. It's not fitted on this one, but that panel there will be designed so that it can be lowered down. TV goes here, and then you've got this area here. Also, the legs on this are height adjustable, so you can drop that down as an infill cushion for it. So if you want that as a day bed or even extra sleeping, then you've got it. What else have we got? We've got um, battery switches for the boat here, nice and easy to reach. And this particular boat is basically a two cabin layout plus a utility area that gives you like a small crew area or an overflow berth. So I'll show you this, but then I'll explain the different options that you can have. We'll head on forward. Now there's a couple of changes happening here. So this one here has got storage. What they're going to be doing with this is taking that out and there's going to be a little settee there, a little two person uh, settee. But there's also an option of a lower helm. So if you're keeping the boat perhaps in Northern Europe and you want to have an internal helm position, that is where that would live. We're going to head down this side first of all. This is the owner's cabin. And it is the full length of this hull. So we've got the bed back here like so. Um, as you'd expect, a ton of storage everywhere. So lockers, drawers, all that kind of thing. And there's a sliding door for this. That's this fella here comes across. So you can close this one off. If it's been right on around, nice little dressing table there. Big windows as well, big hull windows. It's very nice. And then up here is this area, the, <laughs> the ensuite. Uh, there's a name for everything, isn't there? <laughs> I'll edit that out later. Here is the ensuite and the usual thing, loo, sink, etc. But a really nice shower because they put it right up here, as you can see. Um, and that is a pretty decent size, actually. That's excellent. Now, there is an option, if I'm remembering my Aquila specifications correctly, to have two cabins down here. And, um, and so that gives you then a three cabin, as we've got the other cabin over there, or a four cabin. And I'll explain the other side when we go across. But first of all, I'm going to show you this little area, which is rather nice. It's a basically a utility room. There's also a berth in here, so if you wanted that as a crew cabin or an overflow or a teenager den or whatever else, you can have it. But it's somewhere for the washing machine, a load of extra storage. The wine cooler lives in here. Big storage areas in places like this and this. Hatch overhead as well for a bit of uh, daylight and a bit of natural ventilation. But yeah, that's quite a useful little area in there. Now, one of the options is, Let's see if I can explain this carefully. 
This boat, and I will show you when we go on the outside, has a massive, massive deck locker over on that side. That whole front section of that hull is a massive locker. What you can choose to have is instead of that locker, you can have that bed turn through 90 degrees across there, and then you have steps that go down, and where that locker is on this boat, that would be the ensuite for this cabin. So then you have a proper, decent ensuite cabin there if you prefer. But it depends how you're using the boat. A lot of these boats are used by couples doing serious cruising, and they don't need loads of cabins. What they want is deck space for the paddle boards and the folding bikes and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of options, and you can configure it in the way that suits you best. Now, if you go down this side, there's another cabin here. And if you go for the twin cabin on that side, then this becomes the owner's cabin. So as it is at the minute, owner's cabin currently on this side, guest cabin here, and then that small one further forward. The three cabin then is the same as this, but that forward one then extends down to create a bigger cabin at the front. And the four cabin is, this is the owner's cabin. That forward one was the ensuite that goes down into the hull in front of this. And then that one has a twin over there. And if that doesn't make sense, then <laughs> have a look on the website. It'll become a lot clearer. But hopefully I've explained that reasonably well. Hanging locker in here. Lots of bit of storage about the place. Got it in behind here, for example. And again, with the big hole windows, these round sections, not round sections, oval sections even, are um, opening. And you've also got little hatches above as well so you can get some natural light into here and you've got screens that come across lastly I like the lighting in here it's a nice job with that it does feel nice actually this one same on the other side I don't know whether I showed it will close off so that little catch releases and then you've got this that comes across so this does become a completely enclosed cabin the one we saw the owner's cabin on the other side has exactly the same arrangement and then the ensuite for this one is back here Toilet, wash basin, shower, little wave in the mirror. Okay, I think we've done the accommodation. Let's go and have a look around the outside. I really want to show you that big deck locker. I also want to show you the flybridge. But yeah, that is, well, typical of the genre really, isn't it? Just a really big, spacious, comfortable boat. Okay, we'd head on around like this little bar area here. This is where the lift window is, of course. So that, I'm guessing, will hinge up, yeah, out of the way when you want to close the window. We've got deck shower over on this side and steps up here. And then this is an easy stroll forward. We've got nice high rails here. We've also got this rail, which is very helpful as you walk around the boat. Something to hold on to. These are these little hatches that we saw in the ceiling over the cabins. And we come right on up to the bow and we've got the sunbathing area here. You can drop these backrests down flat if you want to. Nice little seats in the corners as well. But the thing I wanted to particularly show you up here, now you imagine that you're a couple, perhaps occasional friends that come with you, but you know, mostly you only need that big owner's cabin and that second cabin for occasional guests. What you want, in fact, is somewhere for the folding bikes and the inflatable paddle boards and the kayaks and everything else. And this gives you exactly that. This is huge. easier if not holding onto a GoPro but nonetheless in we come so this one's got some refri uh, additional refrigeration we've got the shelving in here and that kind of stuff as well but yeah it's just a massive area here for all your detritus and it even goes back into here like so there's even a hull window in here look at that that's fantastic so this is what I mean about that little utility room that we saw at the front. It had a bed that went lengthways. Imagine turning that bed sideways. That would give access to some steps. The steps would come down here, and this would be the ensuite for that cabin. That would give you another big cabin. So with the layout we've got in this boat, that would take it up to three. And then if you split the owner's cabin off into two, that takes you up to four. Right, we will emerge from there. And the next place I want to take you, let's drop that fella back down, is, obviously anchor handling kit is underneath here, but from here we can directly access the flybridge. You don't need to go all the way around and up the steps at the back, you can just step up here. Again, for short-handed cruising, and again, you know, a lot of couples, and they're getting perhaps to retirement age, are buying these and disappearing off for the summer. 
And so you need to be able to handle this easily with just a couple of people. And this makes that possible because you can be at the helm here, you can wander down to the deck at the front, you can wander down to the deck at the back. It's all really easy. We've got the twin helm seat here. Multifunction display, of course, a VHF radio. There's an autopilot on this one. We've got the hard top on here as well. They're going to be lowering this a little bit. This is actually quite high. I mean, I'm over six foot and I'm only just reaching it. So they're going to bring that down a little bit to lower the profile, but otherwise it'll be much the same. And you can see we've got the clear screens all the way around. That one's open. Um, but you can take those off if you just want to have the shade without the windbreak. A whole ton of seating all the way around here, all the way around here. And these tables, you can put a leaf into the center. There's a section that slides out to support it, like so. And that means you've got a really big dining area here. You can put a couple of director chairs on this side, get a lot of people around there. There's a wet bar up here. So that's this little fella here with a barbecue. And the sink is underneath there. And you've got the fridge underneath as well. So that is that. Let's press on a little bit further. The last thing to talk about is engines. So we'll come right around here and this time we will take this stairway back down to the cockpit. Wander across here. Now of course there is an engine in each hull. So there's one on that side, one on this side, exactly the same. The only difference is that the other side has got a generator in as well. And if I undo those, Here we go. Now the standard engines are D4 260, I think. This one's been upgraded to D4 300s. There we are. Now these engines are gonna take your speed up to about 22 knots flat out. You can fast cruise at 18 if you wish to, and that's giving you about probably 250 miles of range roughly. However, as ever with this kind of boat, if you drop the speed right back, you can get some serious range. You're gonna just go out and potter on the water, cover some serious ground, really live aboard out on the sea well then run it at five and a half knots and get well over a thousand miles of range and that for a lot of people is how they'll run them they'll just poodle along but it's nice to know that you've got the speed there if you want it and talking of speed you can upgrade to Yamaha 370 engines and in fact they're doing a foil option as well which will go between the hulls to give you a bit more lift and they're reckoning that that'll get up towards 28 knots so that'll be a pretty quick boat for this style of boat um, fuel tanks are in here as you can see the generator would go back there in the other hull but yeah, that's a pretty decent engine space, really. You can get right in and around and get to all the mechanical bits and pieces. Not bad at all. There we go, that's back down that way. Each engine has its own start battery, and then there are a couple of what they call house batteries, which run all the domestic stuff. And in fact, it's possible to also upgrade those batteries. So if you want more time at sea without running the generator and without the engines running, then you can have larger capacity um, house batteries, they'll add an extra two, I think. There we go. And that, my friends, I think is about that. Let's go back up onto the bow. That's a good place to finish. And I'm going to stand here. I'm going to say massive thanks to Marine Max. They're the dealers out here and they organise this tour. Huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of that one, and we'll catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Helicopter! That is a cool-looking helicopter. Wow! Fantastic.